thing as a life that's better than yours. No such thing as a life that's better than yours. Like yours. No such thing as a life that's better than yours. No such thing as a life that's better than yours. Like yours. No such thing as a life that's All right. Hey, everybody. It is Kinshada, and I'm back again with another fabulous video for you guys. Thank you to all of my YouTube subscribers. Um, for rocking with me, supporting me. Um, I really appreciate all your comments. I love getting your comments. Um, thank you for all the likes and shares. And for those of you who not only just watch the videos, but you actually do reach out and schedule a consultation call with me, I really appreciate you guys. So today I am going to talk about what to do after you get a referral, right? So many of you know, if you follow me on social media, I've been offering the insurance contracting. I've been doing the flash sale for that. Um, and what insurance contracting is, we will do a contract for you. So we will submit the application, go through the whole process um, for you to get contracted with a lot of the leading insurance companies out there in the world, in the nation, um, especially for those of you that are in the states. So you know that they are there are um, insurance companies that's under Medicaid. Medicaid has community plans. And then there are also private insurances where you don't have to be a Medicaid provider to get contracted with those companies. So I've been helping a lot of my home care business owners out there. I appreciate all the love and support in that area. But many of you may have the question, okay, now that I've contracted with these insurance companies, whether it's um, under Medicaid, a community plan, or a private insurance, long-term care insurance, it doesn't matter, whatever it is, you want to know what to do next once you get a referral. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today uh, for you guys. So um, tune in. You may want to grab a notepad and a pen so you can jot down the notes and maybe create a plan for yourself, um, a plan of action on what to do. So the first thing you want to do uh, when you get a referral, so it's going to be determined whether it's from a insurance company or B, if it's a private pay. So once you get a referral from an insurance company, they typically will send you a authorization. On this authorization is going to have the amount of hours, the service type, and you know the client's uh, demographic information, things like that. Okay, plan B. Um, so if it's the private insur a uh, private pay client, sorry, um, you would be um, asking them during the phone conversation, what service types do they want to um, have? How many hours per week? That's something you would discuss with them, okay? So number one, you're just going to determine and make sure you either have your authorization or the amount of hours from your private pay client, and you definitely want to have that information inside of the contract. Number two, you want to make sure that you schedule a home visit. So whether it's an insurance um, client or private pay client, you want to schedule that initial home visit. You want to go out to the home. You want to look around, see if there's any safety concerns. You want to look at the living environment because you're going to be sending caregivers out to this person's home. You want to make sure that everything is safe as far as you can tell. And also you want to explain to the client about your business, um, any emergency contact numbers that they need. You also want to leave a folder of information. So there's a few things that you want to leave in this folder inside of the home of your client. It is going to be um, a client handbook, information about your business, emergency contact numbers, um, abuse hotline information, um, you know, different things like that, HIPAA. So if you want to know more what to put in their folder, reach out to me. All right. Number three, once you schedule the home visit and you get that checked off your list, you want to create their file. OK, so this is going to help you when it's audit time. Right. Um, many of you, I know you're in different states, different audit procedures, but you want to make sure that the client file 
um, has everything in it that's supposed to be in it. Now, I do have checklists that's a part of different, um, different online courses that I have. But if you want to know, schedule a consultation call with me. We can review, go over, go over some of the things that you will need in their file. So you want to create a file, whether it's an insurance client or private pay client. You want to make sure that you have all of their important documentation. Docu documentation that's going to include demographic information, diet. Um, POA, if they have a power of attorney, emergency contact numbers, just to throw a little bit of information out there for you. You want to make sure that you have this information in their file. Definitely a signed contract and the authorization form, depending on what type of client. Okay, the next thing that you want to do, once you get all the information, then you want to assign a caregiver. So you know who you have on your roster. From the home visit is how you would determine which caregiver would be a good fit for the client. So you want to make sure that you're matching the caregiver personality with the client's personality as best as you can, right? And then also you want to consider a, um, a few other things when it comes to the caregivers. How far will they have to drive? Their experience level, you know, their background of experience. So you want to um, gather all of this information and in matching the right caregiver with the right client. Okay. So the next thing that you want to do is determine your billing cycle, right? So whether it is a Medicaid client or a private pay client, you need to determine how often are you going to submit claims or submit your billing. So if they are a Medicaid client, you can determine, you can submit claims daily, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly. It all depends on how you are running your agency, right? Um, how often you want um, to be paid, right? So typically if you want to receive payment every week, then you would need to submit claims every week. Now it's going to be a little bit different with your private pay clients because you can offer more payment options with them. They can pay you cash, check, um, different third party apps. You know, if you choose to use those, um, they can use a credit debit card if you send them a invoice. So you just want to make sure that you get a good understanding of if you're going to send them an invoice weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. So you want to make sure that how you're how often you're submitting claims is matching up with your budget, right? So you know the amount of things that you are responsible for. You have to pay out each month. So you want to make sure that you have the necessary funds to cover your expenses and also to cover payroll. So, um... I think that is it. Uh, let's see here. And one more thing. When you get an authorization, please make sure that you're checking the amount of hours. Um, because if they are a Medicaid client, you only can see them based on the hours they are approved for. Now, it's a little bit different with your private pay clients because they're going to tell you how many hours they want your services. So when it comes to Medicaid, you want to make sure that you're doing everything all the way down to the detail so that you're not getting those claims denied or kicked back because everybody wants to get paid on time, right? So I think that pretty much sums everything up. That was, let's see, one, two, uh, three, four, five. So that was a total of five tips that I gave you um, on what to do when you get a referral. I know many of you still may be nervous. Uh, once you get that first client, you may feel like you don't know what you're doing or you're um, all over the place. If so, if you need that one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, I do offer coaching services to um, you know home care business owners as well to walk you through the different processes um, of operating your business because it is a lot of components that work together to help you become more comfortable and help you to be uh, more successful in your business, right? So you want to make sure that you're doing everything you can to learn the necessary steps, tools, and tips to put in place to help you along the way. So 
coaching. If you know you need coaching, get with me. Um, check out the description in this video. I have a ton of links and information and things like that. And watch the next video because I'm sure another video is going to pop up <laughs> right after this one. So hopefully my five tips on what to do once you get a referral has helped you, gave you some insight and clarity. And if you need more help, like I said, reach out. No such thing as